The movie is more similar in every way to a comic book than the first one, including the fact that you should just really sit back, eat your popcorn, and have fun. And the, st the story is going to be taking twists and turns here and there. And uh, quite frankly, uh, neither David nor I were worried about making this real, as everybody seems to be worried these days. We wanted to make it fun. It's important to me, I, I, I think, from a kind of uh, fan credibility level that this, that this film or these films, this franchise, um, have an integrity to them that's true to the comic books. And one of the things that's a little different from Blade from some of the other more well-known characters like Spider-Man or Captain America is he always was a very dark character, so it's appropriate that these films be R-rated. And you can get away with a little more in these films than you could in Spider-Man or Captain America. But, you know, I, I think they're true to the comic book sensibility. What we did very well was capture the tone of a comic book. And Guillermo's a total comic book geek. He's got a huge, I think, like a quote-unquote important collection of comic books. So he understands the tone very well. And uh, in that sense, whether his style is, is slightly more gothic or baroque, darker, uh, the tone, I think, is still going to be quite consistent. Well, Guillermo was weaned on comic books, as was I. I was a huge comic book collector when I was a kid. I have letters published in Captain America comics and some, some DC comics. And I remember when I was 10 or 11 years old, riding my bike out to a drugstore and buying Tomb of Dracula comics, uh, in which Blade was a character. So it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy that here I am writing these Blade movies. The main thing when a comic book movie is to be done intelligently by someone that really knows the, the genre uh, as, a, as a literary genre. I think that so often you hear someone is adapting a comic book movie and they think they're adapting a movie for retards. And in reality it's a, a extremely sophisticated, extremely difficult, incredibly complex language that comic books have and is for me a form of art. As, uh, there are comic books that stand right next to a Thomas Cole uh, painting uh, as a masterpieces or a, the Mona Lisa or anything you want. For me, there are comic books that are that great as a, as a humanity created uh, a piece of expression. And, and uh, I approach that with enormous respect and discipline and try to translate that to the screen. You know, there are different types of comic books as there are different types of movie. And I wanted this to be the comic books that I read as a young guy that made me excited and, and action-packed and, and, and uh, that had the kind of exaggerated language that Jack Kirby, for example, would have. And I wanted to give the movie that kind of exaggerated language. You know, Ron Perlman with the two guns pointing to each side in an almost superhero pose with, uh, with uh, the Reapers running on the walls or stuff like the explosions which are going to be treated to be like a Jack Kirby explosion in a comic book. The ultimate effect of that is going to even have the trademark, the trademark Jack Kirby style explosion uh, power dots that if you know the comic book style it's very evident. We also push certain sounds beyond the reality. And I, and I say this very often in the mixing stage, I say uh, they are mixing things like real, like a real movie, like a movie that reflects reality, and I tell them it's a comic book. So please make this sound like a comic book door, meaning crack, you know, where, where you read the, where you read the, 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 the sound, bang. Bang in a comic book is bang. In reality, it's, poof. <laughs> you know, it's not good. The style of dialogue there is, is, it has a certain awkwardness that makes it uniquely comic book, like must reach the lever or I will die, you know, or like limb is broken in two, must get up, you know, like things, <laughs> things that are completely, no one talks like that or even thinks like that. But uh, Goyer uh, now and then hits it just perfect in the movie. You know, certain lines uh, just have that same comic book feeling. You have been our most feared enemy. But now there's something else loose on the streets. You want to catch the hunter? You start with the prey. Wesley has an uncanny thing. And it's, I don't know, it's completely part of his nature. 
I know he doesn't try to do that, or at least I don't think he does, but every single time he stops in a movement and where he starts from a movement are perfect comic book poses. Perfect. Like, like you can freeze frame that and it's a, it's a comic book frame. 